My name is Christina Costable and I am the manager of web and digital content at the CFL. So my way too early power rankings, Winnipeg has to be number one. I feel like until they prove otherwise, they are the dominance of the CFL. And number two for me is the Toronto Argonauts. I feel like we need to give a little bit of, you know, love to the reigning champions. And I also feel like they're really going to rely on that really great defense, even if Chad Kelly isn't necessarily proven just yet. And then the rest of my list is BC, Calgary, Hamilton, Ottawa, Saskatchewan, and I'm sorry, Edmonton, but you're number nine on my list. <laughs> so I have three camp battles that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on over the next couple of weeks. The first one is running back in BC. I feel like with James Butler signing with the Hamilton Tiger Cats as a free agent earlier this off season, it left a wide open hole beside Vernon Adams in the backfield. So I know the Lions right now have, I think five running backs on their roster and all of them are, you know, a little less known, but we know from watching the CFL for so long that those guys that are high on the practice roster or who come up and sign from America are kind of those hidden gems. So I'm really curious to see what the BC Lions are going to do at the running back position. The second one for me is what are the Hamilton Tiger Cats doing in their secondary? Only two of their starting five are actually coming back this season with Richard Leonard and Tunde Delacay. And the other three positions are kind of wide open. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens at camp over the next couple of weeks and in the preseason games too, to see who's gonna fill in those roles. And then the third one, I'm kind of cheating here. It's not really a camp battle, but I'm just so curious to know what the Toronto Argonauts are going to be doing at their linebacker position. Not including a Darius Pickett, we know he's the Sam, uh, he's kind of that DB linebacker hybrid, but the actual Mike and Will, I just don't know what they're going to do. They have so many guys. Enoch Mwamba, of course, then they traded for Jordan Williams. You have Quentin McManus. And I think there was two other guys that the Argos were really high on near the end of last year who were kind of filling in for Winton when he was hurt in Jonathan Jones and uh, Trevor Hoyt. And the list goes on. I feel like they have so many linebackers right now. They have a couple Canadians as well. They just drafted a linebacker from in the global draft. So they have a ton of options. And I'm very curious to see what defensive coordinator Corey Mace is going to do at that position. So every year when camp rolls around, one of the most exciting things for me is seeing all of the, the guys who have signed with different teams back in February at free agency with their new squads. Seeing a Eugene Lewis in Edmonton Elks gear, I still had to do a double take. You see all the new guys in Hamilton and Bo Levi and James Butler and Jameer Thurman who have all changed jerseys. To me, that's the most exciting part because you can see the jersey swaps and some of the social media put together, and but you can't actually picture what these guys look like in their new jerseys until you actually see it. So that's one of the most like exciting things for me when training camp rolls around. Of course, the, the football that's happening on the field is exciting too, but I just love seeing finally, I think Eugene was like one of the craziest ones for me this year to see him in Elks here. I'd never thought I'd see him in anything but Montreal. Um, so I really look forward to that every year. So two Canadian players that I think you should keep an eye on this year. One is Tyson Philpot in Montreal. I feel like that's kind of cheating because he was nominated for an award last year. So he obviously had a really good rookie season. But I think with Jake Winicky and Eugene Lewis not in Montreal anymore, I think this is an even bigger opportunity for Tyson to have more targets this year. I know he's going to have to build some chemistry with Cody Fajardo over there in training camp, but I think Tyson's going to have an even bigger year than he did last year. And the second Canadian I think you should keep an eye on is Kwaku Boateng. I feel like we've all kind of forgotten about him. I know he had his injury last year in training camp, which was devastating, and he was really set to have one of his best years after he had two really good ones in Edmonton. Edmonton. And I feel like the guys that he's lining up with in Hamilton, you look like Casey Sales, Jagera Davis, Dylan Wynn, like being around that caliber of player can only make you better. And I feel like it's going to open up a lot of space for him if they're double teaming these other guys for him to get around the edge. So I feel like Kwaku is going to have a really good season this year. I'm really anticipating that and I'm really excited to see what he does in Hamilton. So two players I think you should keep an eye on in the CFL this season. One, Bo Levi Mitchell. I feel like there's this weird narrative that's going around in the CFL world that Bo's done. Bo's washed up. I'm using air quotes because I don't believe that. I feel like Bo has been dealing with injuries the last couple of seasons. It's been a while since we've seen a healthy Bo and I don't think he's finished. I feel like it wasn't uh, that long ago that we were having a similar conversation around Zach Kolaris, and now he's laughing at all of us with two MOPs and two Grey Cup rings. So I don't think this is the end of Bo. I know there's been some chatter about that. I think Bo's set to have a really big season. I think Bo plays well when he has a chip on his shoulder, and I think that he is going to be 
really, really good for the Hamilton Tiger Cats this season. So I started at the CFL back in 2016. Um, I actually was in nursing school before I decided to take journalism. Right out of high school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life. And I was like, okay, I really like science. I was good at it, so let me try to do nursing. Um, I did a year of it. It was not for me. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out a way um, after I left nursing school that I could work in sports. And at the time, I wasn't really sure of a clear path and, and what path I wanted to go on in the sports world. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I could be a sports journalist. I didn't really know what journalism was. I was kind of like going out on a limb and, and taking a risk, but I really, really, really wanted to work in sports. So I decided to take journalism. And then when I was in school, I really just put all my focus and attention in covering essentially all of the sports that were in Hamilton with the exception of the Thai Cats. I, they couldn't, they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> I, I make jokes about that now, but they were like, no, sorry, we don't have students that cover. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Everyone else, you know, I, I, I had some I tabled in radio and, and TV, and I worked for the CJFL Hamilton Hurricanes, and I was their digital host, and I, I worked for the Hamilton Bulldogs, and then I was the in-stadium host for the Hamilton Cardinals. Like, I tried to get my foot in everywhere to really try all of these different things um, to see what I wanted to do. And then I think about, I think I was watching the Grey Cup in 2015, and I still was in school, and I really just wanted to work for the CFL, and I sent this tweet out that I still have a screenshot of, and I said, one day I'll be working at the Grey Cup, hashtag career goals. And exactly a year later, I was on the sideline at my first Grey Cup. So manifestation is real. If you put that out there and you work hard enough, like you will get your dreams, and that's kind of what I did. And uh, here we are seven years later. <laughs> So one piece of advice I would give to any woman or anyone who's looking to get in sports, but especially a woman is know that you belong. Sometimes um, in sports, and by sometimes I mean all the time, uh, it's very male dominated, especially when you're covering a male sport. You know, there's many times that I've gone to press conferences and gone in a locker room to do interviews after a game and I'm the only girl, always and just know that you belong and that your perspective matters and it really doesn't matter if you've played at a high level or not you still have value and you still have a lot of different things that you can bring to the table that is important and that those voices are needed especially when we're covering a sport that is so male dominated so just know that you belong and know that there is a space for you at the table and just follow your dreams and if you want it bad enough you'll get it and it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female or, or identify otherwise like you belong where you want to be